it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, we're going to learn how to crochet the playing in the grass dishcloth. This is a dishcloth in our Summer of Dishcloths Crochet Along, uh, a series of dishcloths where I'll be sharing a new dishcloth pattern every week in the months of July and August. Uh, this is the third one in our series, and I have a little directory I've created of all the dishcloths we've done so far, and each time I post one of these, I'll update it. So I'll put the link down below in case you've missed any of the other ones. This is uh, an unusual one, unlike any of the ones we've made so far. I've used a combination of the Scrubby Smoothie, which is the cotton yarn, and Scrubby Sparkle. I held the strands together, and the result is it feels like grass. It, it looks and feels like um, AstroTurf. It's really interesting how uh, this effect is, was created. Um, but in the kitchen, when you have those really hard-working um, projects that you need to kind of scrub down. Uh, this makes a great scrubby kind of dishcloth. So some of the ones we've done more are like for wiping surfaces. This one will really get in there and scrub. Now, you can leave out the scrubby sparkle if you're not into it or don't have it. It's totally fine. You can make this in just the scrubby smoothie if you want a uh, completely cotton dishcloth. But if you want that sparkle and that grassy uh, look, then try that. That's a, It's a really fun combination to work with. I've also added some little flower appliques in each of the corners here with the cotton yarn as well. I'm going to show you how to make those. They're completed in just one round and we just uh, threw a few stitches in there to attach them and you could actually use them for some scrubby power too. Now I know some of you have asked if it's okay to just not use them, and that's perfectly fine. I have made dishcloths in the past where I just wanted to use them for display or just, you know, kind of sit a little candle in them or something like that. So you can really use them for anything you like. Feel free to do that. So the finished piece, this is a little bit bigger than some of the other ones we've done. This is about 10 inches by 10 inches, and each one of these flowers is about an inch and a half wide. So let's jump right into the tutorial and get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is always helpful to get the size that you need. We're going to be using the 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook for this project and our yarn. Let's talk about the yarn. We have lots of fun yarn sitting here. Now all along, if you've been crocheting dishcloths with us for this crochet along, we've been using the Scrubby Smoothie from Red Heart. We're going to be adding a little bit of a different one in today and I'm going to talk about that in a second. But for the scrubby smoothie colors, we're going to be using the lime, the bright pink, and the cherry. And then we're also going to be adding in something called scrubby sparkle. Now that's going to give it, um, because it's called playing in the grass, it's going to give it that really textured grassy look and add some dimension. Now if you can't get your hands on this or really just don't want to integrate this type of yarn into your dishcloth, you could just stick with the scrubby smoothie which would be perfectly fine. On the rose I'll be using the sparkle, you can just use the green. It's totally up to you. And then we're going to add some little uh, flowers to our grassy field in the cherry and the hot pink. So this is a really fun dishcloth to stitch up and when you use it in the kitchen this scrubby sparkle gives it a little bit of an extra um, oomph when you're using to scrub pots and pans and things like that. So it's beautiful and functional. So let's get started. So like I mentioned before we're going to be holding two strands together. One of the smoothie, one of the sparkle and as an alternative you could definitely absolutely just hold this strand or you could do just this yarn. It's it's completely up to you. Just know, let me grab my dishcloth, that this one has, um, I don't want to say stiffness, but it has a, a little bit of a thickness to it. If you just hold one strand, you're going to get more of a drape and that's totally fine. Um, it works well. We're going to use the eye hook like I mentioned before. So all we're going to do is hold two strands together. Again, you can choose either yarn, both yarns, or if you have a different yarn, totally fine. Now what we're going to do is put a slip knot on our hook to start and what I'm going to do is just zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. We're going to wrap the yarn around our fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up the loop and tighten. Now I do get some questions about holding yarn together like this. 
you're just going to hold it throughout the whole process as if it were just one strand of yarn, okay? We're going to do a starting chain of 30. So what we want to do is, let me just get in there a little bit closer. To make a chain, you're going to wrap yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop, okay? So that was one chain, and we're going to do 30. So that was one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, and 30. Whenever you're working with novelty yarn like this with some texture, just be sure and go nice and slow. Um, especially for the starting chain and when you're working those first couple rows, just go nice and slow. Okay, we're still holding those two strands and I wanted to point out too with the smoothie, it does help you to see your stitches a little bit easier, but if you use just the sparkle, it does have a, a strand through it so you can still see. I've experimented with both. Okay, so what we're going to do to begin for row one, we're going to work a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So this loop here does not count. Oh, and before we proceed, if you're having trouble, I get this question a lot, if you're having trouble with your starting chain being too tight, go up a hook size, so you can go up to the uh, J hook is the next one up, and work your starting chain in the J hook, and then come back down to the I for the rest of your project. So what we're going to do now is, again, work a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, and four. So in that chain there, we're going to wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the chain, bring up a loop. We'll have three loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Next, what we're going to do is work a double crochet in each chain across, okay? So again, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the next chain, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. And again, with this textured stuff, just go nice and slow to begin. And we're just going to work a double crochet in every chain all the way across. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and continue and work my double crochets. If you need to see any part of this video again, definitely feel free to back up and re-watch it. YouTube also has a way to slow down the video if you need to see it even slower. Okay, so I'm going to continue working my double crochets and we'll rejoin in just a moment. All right, I just am working that last double crochet in that very last chain. So let's move on to row two. Now row two is almost exactly like row one, except for instead of working into the chains, we're gonna be working into the stitches. So all you need to do is chain three, one, two, three, and turn your work, and we'll deal with those tails later. Uh, also, I wanted to mention, when you're working into the chains and the stitches, make sure you're going into both the uh, scrubby smoothie loop and the scrubby sparkle loop. Just make sure you're catching both of those loops when you do your stitch. Okay, so at the base of our turning chain, there's a little loop. So this counts as one of our double crochets. We're not going to work into that, that loop at the base of the chains. We're going to work into that next one, okay? And we're just going to work a double crochet in each stitch across, okay? So double crochet, double crochet, all the way across. This is a very super easy, straightforward um, dishcloth. Because of the textured yarn, you uh, it's always a good idea with um, very textured yarn like this to try to keep it simple with your stitches. So that's why we're doing these really simple stitches. And this will also um, be a quick project because it's really easy little stitches. And you can also see that we've only worked two rows and all, already we have quite a bit of height, okay? So we're just gonna work our double crochets all the way across our row here and Again, if you need to go nice and slow with a novelty yarn, feel free to do that. 
Now if you're using the cotton yarn, you might be able to pick up speed a little bit, but whenever I'm using textured novelty yarn, I try to kind of slow things down because it, it can snag a little bit if, if you um, are trying to go too fast with it. And I gotta say, I can't uh, get over how much this looks like grass. It's really a fun little project. Okay, so we're about halfway through just working our double crochets. If you want to get fancier with your stitches, feel free. I've been really enjoying all of the pictures all of you have been sharing um, on social media and the Ravelry group. Definitely be sure and use that uh, hashtag FiberFluxCal to share your work because um, it's really fun to see what everybody's doing. And all of you are so creative with your color choices. It's fun to see what color combinations everybody picks. Too. They're all so pretty and unique and all of these projects, these dishcloth projects, are great stash busters as well. Okay, so I am coming up to the end here. So what we're going to do is work a double crochet in the last stitch of our row and it's right there. But you're also going to work a double crochet in the top of the turning chain. Two. So remember that turning chain from the previous row? Just look for the topmost chain. You can see the chains go up here. Just look for that topmost chain. If you need to feel it out a little bit because of the texture, uh, that's helpful as well. But just work a double crochet in that topmost turning chain. You might need to wiggle it a little bit to kind of feel, feel it out. There we go. Three row uh, loops. Work your double crochet as you normally would. Okay, so row two is complete. Now, to finish our dishcloth, what we're going to do, let me zoom back out a little bit, what we're going to do is keep repeating row two over and over and over again until our dishcloth is about the same width and height, okay? So let me grab my other dishcloth, and this is just a little trick. Now, you can have your ruler or your tape measure and kind of measure as you go along, but if you bring if you go corner to the other corner and kind of fold it down, if your dishcloth uh, has very little here and here on the edges, then it's about the same. Now I had a little bit of extra, but um, you know you can kind of just roughly as you're crocheting, just fold it down and see if your height and your width are the same. Uh, you can make yours taller, you can make yours narrower, you can really um, if you want to make your shorter, just simply work less rows. If you want to make it a little narrower, um, there's no special stitch count, so you could just do less starting chains. So I'm going to keep repeating row two, and then we'll rejoin, and we're going to finish off our dishcloth. We're going to learn how to weave in the ends and add these lovely little flowers. Okay, so stay tuned, and we're going to uh, keep going on our playing in the grass dishcloth. So I grabbed the cherry red and the bright pink. And I was going to do a couple down in the bottom corner, a little cluster, and a couple at the upper left-hand corner. So these are super easy to make, and I've put them on a couple other projects in the past as well. So I'm going to just grab one of the colors, and what we're going to do once again, actually let me zoom in for you, is put a slip knot on our hook. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up the loop, and tighten. Next, we're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. And we're going to join in the chain farthest from our hook to create a loop or a ring to work our stitches in. So insert the hook into that chain farthest from the hook. Bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And then you can kind of open up that ring. And we're going to hold that tail along the edge as we work. So let's start and make some petals. So what we're going to do is chain three, one, two, three, and then we're going to work two double crochets into the center of the ring. So one double crochet, and still holding that tail along the edge, and two double crochet. So that's going to be our first petal. So if you need to slide things over a little bit too, feel free. Then we're going to work a slip stitch into the center of the ring, and that's going to give us those in-between dips for our petals, okay? 
So insert the hook into the center of the ring, bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And then we're going to continue around by working three double crochet. Each petal is three double crochet as a side note. So one, just get some more yarn, two, and three, and then we're going to work a slip stitch into the center of the ring to create that little divot that we need. And whoops, drop my hook there. All right, we're still holding that tail along the edges we work. Just do the best you can and hold that. Then work three double crochets into the center of the ring. One, two, slide things over if needed. Three. Uh, I did mention this before, but our flower is going to have five petals. Okay, so so far we have three petals, and then we're going to do two more. So three double crochet and then a slip stitch. Three double crochet and a slip stitch all the way around. So you have five petals. Okay, so this is our fourth petal. Slide things over if you need to. It gets a little bit tight, so sliding that over is super helpful. Okay, then we're going to work our last petal. So three double crochet. Get a little bit more yarn here. So one, two, and three. Okay. Next, we're going to work a slip stitch into the center, and our petals are complete. And then you're just going to join in that first chain up. So remember we did the three chains at the beginning of that petal? In that first chain, just join with a slip stitch to close around. You might have to wiggle it, insert the hook, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And then we're going to cut the yarn, and then you can wrap yarn around the hook and fasten off. So you can do a whole little meadow of flowers. You could do... Uh, just a little sprinkling. Uh, so what you want to do next is flip it over, pull that center tail nice and tight. And then because it's a one round flower, it's kind of goofy looking right now. So we just need to shape things up. Okay. Shape things up nice and neat. And then you can use your tapestry needle. And our tail is sort of on the end right now, but we, what we can do is run our tapestry needle. Now I have a little bit of a loop here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that a little bit. But we can run our tapestry needle towards the center of the flower, and that will help us stitch it on a little bit neater, okay? So just bring that tail right on in, shape things up a little bit. All right, I'm just working that very last double crochet into my turning chain just to finish things off here. And so now the dishcloth is complete. And if you could kind of reach through this video and feel it has like an effect, it almost feels like real grass. It's really interesting. It has a fun texture and it's going to have a lot of scrubbing power uh, in the kitchen. So what we want to do now is go ahead and cut our yarn. Now I worked roughly, um, the height, the same height as the width. And you can easily check that without even measuring by just taking the uh, one of the corners and folding it down. And if it roughly, um, now I probably went a little bit higher, but if you, if you fold it down and it's about the same with very little on either edge, then it's about the same height as the same width. So um, what we wanna do now is go ahead and cut the yarn, the two strands. And then we're gonna grab our hook wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop just like that. And then what we need to do is uh, weave in the ends and then we're going to add our cute little flowers. Okay. So let's weave in the ends first. Now when you have two strands like this, 
try experimenting. I'm going to try weaving them in together, but if it's a little bit bulky, you can go, um, you, know, you know, you can weave one in, in at a time, but I'm going to go ahead and try this and see if it works. Okay, so we're going to just go in one direction through these stitches, just like that. And then we're going to come back in the other direction just to kind of lock that tail into place. Okay, and then you can just snip that off. And then we have another one down here, and that works perfectly fine, just as a side note, uh, weaving them in together. So let's thread our tapestry needle, just like that. We're going to go in one direction here with our needle, and then in the other direction to lock that tail into place, just like that. And then we can just snip it off, okay? So the grassy lawn is complete. Now we just need to add some cute little flowers. Now uh, we made some earlier and I went ahead and made a few more. So um, I did three red and three pink. Now I left the tails intact so that we can sew them right on. So what I would do, what I would recommend is to kind of figure out your placement. So I did three red, three pink. So I'm going to do like two reds and a pink down here and then two pinks one two three okay let's redo this part I had I made an extra for some reason wait three reds, three pinks. Okay. Okay, so I have my flowers right here. Now we made one earlier and I went ahead and made a few more. So I did three pinks and three reds. So um, now you could cover this like a little flowery meadow or something like that. Or you could just, I'm going to just put some accent flowers kind of down in the corner here. So I'm going to do like a little group up here like that and a little group here. Now you notice, uh, I have the tails on here, so I'm going to use those to seam them onto our dishcloth. Okay, so just get your placement first, and then you can, you know, figure out how you want it to go. So let's sew one of these on together, and you don't need a lot of stitches. In fact, if you overstitch these, it'll really flatten down. Um, you want it to be secure, obviously, but you don't want it to be um, completely flattened down to the grass. Okay, so each one of your flowers will have two tails. One where we, remember we wove that in as we went along. So go ahead and we're going to snip that one off. Give that a strong tug and then just snip that tail away. And then you have this tail here, which we're going to go ahead and thread. Now the tail, and let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. The tail here is on the edge. We don't want it to be on the edge because it'll show more when we start seaming. So just go ahead and bring your tail in a little bit like that. And now it's ready to sew. And you can kind of shape that up a little bit. Now place it where you want. And I'm going to clear these other ones off for now. Place it where you want. I'm going to put this in the, the corner here. And then what we're going to do is just go into our piece here. Go down and then up, down and then up. We're going to go do this all the way around. And again, you don't want to overdo it. We want to keep it um, kind of 3D, but at the same time, we're going to be using this as a hardworking dishcloth. I know some of my dishcloths I've made, I, I don't really want to use. I like them <laughs> too much. I don't, I'm afraid to mess them up. So this could also be, you could uh, hang this up if you like. Or you could use it as a little, uh, like a mug rug or like uh, stick a candle on it. Okay, so I just went all the way around stitching up my 
my flower here and you can kind of check it as you go along just kind of give it a little tug okay so our flower is attached now flip it over and just double check make sure it's exactly how you want it to go and my needle fell out I meant to keep that in there and then what we're gonna do is you want to just go underneath a couple of these loops here like that and see how you've created a, a loop back here just if you can it's a little bit snug but just uh, take your needle back through like that and that'll create a knot you can give that a nice tug you might even want to add another knot just to make sure that flower really really stays on I'm just gonna put another knot a just in case knot and then my needle keeps falling out because my tail's getting short but then what we're going to do is just sort of weave this end in. So we're going to go in one direction here, and then we can come back in the other direction. Now you will get a little bit of, uh, of a stitchy look on the back just because we're stitching red onto green. It's going to show. But we definitely on this one, some of our dishcloths have been reversible. This one definitely has a front and a back, okay? So you can just uh, snip that tail. And we have our flower. Now this, I think this looks cute, you know, just with one flower on there. Uh, let me zoom out so you can see. But I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of the flower because I want it to have a little bit more 3D and some color throughout. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to add my flowers and we'll rejoin in just a moment. So all the flowers are stitched on and it looks super cute. Now again, you can cover the whole thing in flowers if you like. Um, I just kind of like the accent in the corner. Also, be sure and check out the other dishcloths in the series. I'm going to be sharing a dishcloth every week in the month of July and August. There will be a total of nine dishcloths. And um, if you haven't joined the Ravelry group for the Fiber Flux Cow, this is the group for all of our crochet alongs, but it gives you a place to connect with other makers. You can ask questions. There's a lot of people that jump in and help each other out. It's a wonderful place for makers. It's a very positive group, and you can also show off your work, and I'll put the link down below for that as well. And if you share uh, this on social media, also be sure and use the hashtag FiberFluxCal to show off your work too. It's really fun to see what everybody's making. So that is how you crochet the Playing in the Grass dishcloth. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlux video updates. Thanks again. Thanks.